Welcome to the Nine Elements Podcast, brought to you by Restore Hyper Wellness. I'm your host, Eric Hinman. Each week, I sit down with trailblazers in the fitness, nutrition, and wellness communities, exploring how they optimize their daily lives for ultimate performance to do more of what they love. I'm a five-time Ironman brand builder and someone who's obsessed with health and wellness, structuring much of my day around fitness and recovery protocols. On today's episode, I chat with Neen Williams, a professional skateboarder, fitness trainer, restaurant owner, spice company owner, and brand builder. Neen has built his life and businesses around his passions, and I think we'll all take some valuable insights away from this conversation. So, I mean, I'd love to dive into your, kind of your backstory because, you know, I've only known you since you were, you know, super fit in the health and wellness world. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously prior to that, you know, you had a, it sounds like a, a background of partying, which obviously is more in line with the skating lifestyle. So yeah, kind of mm-hmm. walk, walk me through, you know, the, why the major change in lifestyle um, yeah, walk me through that. You know, it all didn't just start out of nowhere. There was a reason why it all started. And, um, I've been a skateboarder pretty much most of my life. I started off at like 13, um, 36 now. I skated, I started skating in Chicago and then eventually around 22 I moved to California to just continue to skate and like chase my skating dreams of hopefully one day turning professional um I eventually turned professional after a lot of hard work and dedication and you know with the whole skate life um we live a very like free you know we don't need to talk to any bosses or like going to work kind of lifestyle so with that comes a lot of partying and good times with with your friends you know um towards when I like right before I turned professional I kind of got into partying pretty heavy um just partying all night wake up in the morning be hungover and then try to skate try to film some tricks but I couldn't get them because I was always hung over and I, I had it was like a vicious cycle and this went on for pretty much like a year and a half to two years and it was getting pretty bad too because um, we were making money from sponsors and stuff so we were able to afford parties we like call 10 people bring 10 people over and we would just go to town you know like basically just spend all our money on just substance and just abuse the substances you know um so it was pretty bad and what happened so the catalyst that switched all this around um is i tore my acl this was the second Mm -hmm. time i tore my acl um the first time was like 10 years ago this time i was like 27 28 tore my acl 28 years old is kind of old in skateboarding. So, you know, I was really bummed that I did this because I know it takes about, you know, nine to 12 months until you're able to, you know, skate again, be active again, because you're just recovering the whole time and rebuilding muscles and everything. So it's just like this long process for you to recover from ACL surgery. Um, So I was fearing, you know, that I messed up my career and that was that you know I worked so hard to get to where I was and literally I pretty much was throwing it all away by partying and not doing the thing that I did for you know my whole life like how I just switched it to partying so basically it woke me up I tore my ACL I somewhere I've talked to like a couple people about you know if you don't drink while you heal from an injury, you heal a lot better, you know, because your body isn't focusing on healing you from the alcohol. Mm. Um, it has more time to focus on actually healing the injury that you have. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, I'm going to quit drinking for, you know, the nine to 12 months so my body could heal as good as I can. And then I could get right back into skating. I'm going to get back into my A game and I'm going to like come back swinging, you know? So I was like, I'm going to 
stop drinking, stop partying, just do this. And then when I get back, like maybe I'll pick up drinking again. Maybe I'll pick up partying. Like who knows? Mm -hmm. So basically taking these days off, you know, each day, the first few days was, was hard. It was tough. Um, but I was, you know, I, I went through surgery, so I was in a cast, I was doing physical therapy, so there was things for me to do. So I couldn't like go to a bar or a, cl or a club or anything like that. So mm -hmm. I basically just spent my time at home playing video games, watching TV, hanging with my girlfriend, which is my mm -hmm. wife now, and, you know, just doing normal stuff like going out to dinner and stuff. So it kept me away from the bar for, you know, the first few months. And with that, that helped me build a strong will, you know, mm -hmm. so I was able to say no when it, when I was able to visit a bar, go to a club, I could be like, ah, you know, I don't want to drink. I don't want mm -hmm. that, you know, and this this changed everything for me. So as the months went on, I started doing physical therapy to recover you know, to rebuild the muscles in my legs. And I have a really high output. Mm -hmm. So just doing like a couple easy little leg things with bands and um, little stim machines and stuff wasn't enough for me. So I would ask my coach to give me some upper body work or something else that I can do to help me tire out. You know, you, you work out with me all the time. So I, mm -hmm. I need like more to tire me out because I was going home and I, I was bored, you know? So as they started giving me extra training, I started getting into it more. And then I realized like, hey, like this stuff, training can actually help a skateboarder. Because till now, all we did was we would use training when we would injure ourselves to recover from an injury. And then as soon as we were recovered, that was it. We just mm -hmm. go right back to skating, no lifting, no training, no, no, like no taking care of yourself whatsoever, just back to skating. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And since I was down for so long, I was able, like something clicked and I realized like, Hey, like we should be training like pretty often, you know, a few times a week. Cause this is just going to help us. Like this is going to help us get the most out of our careers and let us, you know, do the things we love for like the long run, you know, mm -hmm. by keeping everything strong, by keeping the body explosive, you know, training plyometrics and strength training. So you're just like, you're fast, you're powerful, you know, you keep that athleticism throughout the years, you know, as you get older, your body starts to deteriorate. And if you don't do anything to kind of counteract that, you, you can fall apart, you know, and skaters, it's like, we just skate, 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 drink, skate, party. And it, there's no, there's no counteraction, you know? So it's like, you're just beating your body down. And mm -hmm. that's, so basically end of the long story is that's like when you found me, when we met each other mm -hmm. was when I was, it was like a few years after I already started on this path, little by little, I started taking things in. I started doing uh, certifications for like kettlebell training, steel mace. I did a couple of kettlebell training certifications. I got hooked up with on it. You know, I started hanging with like Primo and everybody and just kind of like asking questions and like soaking in information, like people that are on the top of their games. Like I would ask them questions cause I was so interested and I wanted to mm -hmm. like, I wanted to take this vessel, my body, and I wanted to keep it going longer and stronger. And I wanted to skate the stuff that I wanted to skate for as long as I can. And I just kind of, you know, I took off from there and that's when I met you. So mm -hmm. like you, you met me right in the, right after a couple of years where I was like, I, I was talking to a couple of my friends, they were bodybuilders and they were like teaching me how to eat. Cause like nutrition goes such a long way with all of this, you know? So they were teaching me how to eat. And before this, I never knew how to eat. I would just, you know, eat a pizza at the end of the day, drink a 12 pack. And you know, like, that was my mm -hmm. nutrition, you know? And I wondered why I was sore and why mm -hmm. I wasn't recovering and why I was getting injured. But, you know, I didn't learn that till later on in life. So 
yeah, mm-hmm. that's basically where it is. <laughs> so we yeah. can pick into it if you like. Yeah, so you touched on some interesting points. Um, people often ask me if I still drink, and I never, you know, had like a cold turkey moment, but during my Ironman training years, you know, I phased out of it for the same reasons as you. I just, once I stopped consuming alcohol, I realized how much better I felt, not mm-hmm. just like physically, but mentally, you know, so much mental clarity, so much more energy, better sleep. I mean, everything. It's just a snowball effect. And, you know, also as I got, you know, out of the partying scene and more into the health and wellness scene, my friend group changed, you know, and then like moving to Denver, Colorado, my environment changed. So it sounds like that's very similar with you where, you know, it started with, you know, a it's something catastrophic in, in your world that led you to, you know, not drinking and then not drinking led to, you know, recovering more training, um, different friend group, different environment. And it's amazing over the years, you know, how all of that adds up. And, you know, advice I always give to people is like, don't get overwhelmed with where Nina's is right now. You know, I mean, you mm-hmm. now have been doing this for five or six years. I've been living this life for 12 years and, mm-hmm. you know, it, It was year after year of like picking one thing to tackle. So, you know, sleep, nailing sleep, focusing that on one year, figuring out what temperature to sleep at, you know, figuring out what sleep tonic I needed to have, figuring out that I needed a sleep mask and earplugs. And, um, you know, the next year it was diet, putting that on autopilot, you know, understanding what foods I really enjoyed and when to eat them at, you know, during the day so that I just continued to have incredible energy throughout the day. And, you know, the year after that, it was purposeful training, understanding why I was doing what I was doing. So, and, you know, alcohol is inflammatory. So, you know, along with, you know, sugar and processed foods. And once you start taking some of that stuff out, you realize how high you can perform, you know, but, Mm -hmm. you know, if you have ice cream every single night, that's just the norm. If you drink every night, that's the norm. You don't really know what, you know, a hundred percent feels like because you're at 70% all the time. And that's so cool that, you know, I'm sure it took some time, but you're like, wow, I incorporate this in now I'm at 87%. I incorporate this in I'm at 91%. And then it just becomes a chase to be like, what is my 100%? I want to know, like, what's the best version of me? Mm -hmm. And how long can I sustain that? Exactly. (laughs) How long can I keep that 100 going, you know? Yeah, you're right. Because in our 20s, we're very in the moment. We're very day by day. We're not really thinking about the future, you know, it's, it's way out there, you know, we're going to live forever. But I, yeah, I, I just turned 42 and yeah, the last five years for me have been more about, I want to do this for a really long time. So, you know, for me, my recovery routine is just as important as my exercise routine and, you know, my sleep routine and diet, oh, yeah. you know, just having, I want to back it up day in and day out. And I I wonder if this is the same for you. But for me, it's much more about feeling now rather than chasing achievements. Um, Mm -hmm. I want to feel good day in and day out. I want to exude positive energy. Um, I want to have awesome conversations with people. I just want my my mind firing in all cylinders. Um, And has that been kind of the same for you where it's gone – you know, and maybe you're still like equal parts, but you know, not quite as much like physical performance based. And has it become more like, I want to feel good. You're a dad now. I want to feel good for my (laughs) wife and you know, my kids. And yeah, definitely. I'm on the same exact page. Like I still push myself on my skateboard every day. Um, I'm still a professional skateboarder, but when it comes to my training and my routine, my recovery, it's like, I'm very, um, I'm very religious with what I do with that, you know, with my training. I want to, I don't want to be my strongest next week. I want to be my strongest at like 70 years old, you know? So I'm, I'm here. My whole main thing with training is I'm playing the long game, you know, little by little. I'm not trying to like max out on the heaviest deadlift right now. It's like just little by little. If I feel good, I'll do a little extra two, two and a half pounds, five pounds, you know what I mean? And that's about it. But I'm never like trying to hurt myself or stress myself. I want myself to feel, you know, the best I can feel for as long as I can. So yeah, man, I'm just, you know, taking it day by day and trying to extend 
the positivity, extend the happiness, you know, and just keep it going, keep it flowing, you know? Yeah. So uh, in addition to professional skateboarder, and we'll get into all of the other hats you're wearing. I mean, I don't think there's anything you're not doing right now. Uh, but you are one of the trainers on the platform Ladder, yeah, uh, yeah. which is based in Austin. Nina's mm-hmm. just outside of Austin. Um, so walk me through the programming that's that's on there. And also walk me through, like, what does your programming for you look like to function at your highest level day in and day out? Definitely. So yeah, I'm a coach for Ladder. We um, so I partnered up with my friend. His name's Rain Nell, and we um, we brought a performance based athletic program to the masses. Basically, um, it's the same stuff that I do, same stuff that he does. That keeps me in shape. That keeps me on my skateboard. That keeps me pushing and being explosive and powerful for like all these years to come. Um, I've been doing it for. I've been. Uh, programming for ladder for two years now um, but I've been doing this same exact type of programming for about five years so you know the proof is in the pudding you know I've been doing it it's been helping me I'm 36 going on 37 I could still skate like I'm 20 years old so it's like it it, it works for me it's not going to work for everyone but it works for me and i like to share that and people that are interested can come in and try it out um we focus on a like a building a perfect blend of strength power you know explosiveness um cardiovascular endurance muscular endurance just like everything that creates a great athlete so we just blend that all together um, we base it on proven principles to drive progress and then we just get after it, you know? So it's, it's been awesome. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen the ladder app, but it's the closest, Beautiful. yeah, it's the closest thing to actually being trained by myself, my friend mm-hmm. rain in person, because you put on your headphones, you press play, you choose whatever day you want, leg day, upper body day, whatever you want, conditioning. You press play and then I come out or rain comes up and we explain the workout to you and then as you're doing the workout we're like giving you cues as if we're standing above you in your ears letting you know you know uh, brace your core you know lock those lats back just like giving you little pointers and cues as you're doing these movements reminding you to breathe reminding you what muscles to uh, contract and when and how and, you know, it's, it's, it's really awesome. And just coming from the skate world and then going into the fitness world, getting my certifications and then now coaching people for the past few years, it's been like such a uh, rewarding feeling to like actually help people kind of reach their goals and move forward with life. And just like seeing it, like they send us messages all the time about their progress and everything. And it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it feels amazing to help people. Cause I'm coming from like the entertainment w- world where it's like, Neen, jump bigger, jump longer, jump further, mm-hmm. you know, to now it's like, I have like a bigger purpose and it's to help people, you know, do the things they love for the long run. Cause that's basically what our programming is based on. It's longevity, you know, we mm-hmm. want you to feel good. It's exactly what me and you have been talking about this whole program. It's like, we Mm -hmm. want you to feel good. We want you to be at your prime. We want you to do the things that you love forever. Yeah. Um, following a program is so important. Um, Mm -hmm. just having a plan. I don't like going to the gym and not knowing what I'm going to be doing. So, you know, in my triathlon years, I had a coach, I followed a program and, uh, my coach back then, Mike Corona taught me a valuable lesson and it was, Think like a bumblebee and train like a racehorse. So mm-hmm. a bumblebee isn't supposed to fly based on its its shape and size, but because it believes it can, it does. And then a racehorse just listens to its master. You know, mm-hmm. it has its plan and it just goes. And that's so important because there's a major difference between, you know, exercise and training. Yeah. Exercise, you know, great. You're burning calories. You know, hopefully you're staying fit. But training, like you're, there's a goal behind it. You're yeah. doing something to get stronger or you're doing something to get more aerobically fit or you're doing something to get more anaerobically fit. You know, there's all of these energy systems and, you know, strength modalities 
That's um, what I always I always tell people that. Sorry for interrupting, but I always tell no. people that it's like when you train, there's a goal in mind, and if you have mm-hmm. a goal, like it's best to go with a program because then you'll see the results. You know, instead of yep. just going to a gym and figuring it out, <laughs> you know, and hoping it works, it's like. If you have a goal, follow a program that is geared towards that goal and mm-hmm. you will see the results. I remember back in the day, like a lot of people, they dreaded their workouts. That was like, oh, it's mm-hmm. so boring. Oh, this, oh, that. I look forward to my workouts every Same. single day. I'm like, oh, I can't wait. Like, here we go, <laughs> you know? Yep. And it, it's like every time it's fun and I actually enjoy being in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's two things. If you're not enjoying it, you're, you're doing something that you don't enjoy period. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if you're not looking forward to it, it may mean you're overtrained. Your cortisol levels are too high. Mm -hmm. You know, you need more recovery, go to restore hyper wellness and get your recovery and go sit in an infrared sauna. Um, Humans continue to spend more and more time in front of a screen, and while productivity is on the rise, we are becoming increasingly sedentary as a society. However, movement through physical activity helps us feel better, function more efficiently, sleep better, and ultimately helps reduce the risk of many chronic diseases. During Neen's episode, we've been discussing everything about his transformation from pro skateboarder to fitness influencer and how he balances life as both. Naturally, that comes down to movement, and Neen is always moving. From filming skate video parts to innovating new kettlebell routines, he's constantly in movement and fully aware that recovery from movement will keep him going. Now, when I say movement can be helpful, I don't mean that you should go out and stack your week full of high-intensity workouts either. Simply walking can maximize longevity, promote cognitive performance, and help the body to maintain a healthy weight. Adding recovery to your wellness plan is also a beneficial tool to add. And now you can try it out for yourself. Nine Elements listeners can receive 20% off your first restore service using the code ELEMENTS20 when making your first appointment. That code again is ELEMENTS20 to save 20% when booking your first service with Restore. Uh, Let's switch gears to recovery. So um, I think, you know, some of us in, you know, this extreme... um, uh, exercise world, whether it's a professional athlete or just, you know, someone like me who I love exercising, you know, oftentimes it's easy to overtrain because, you know, I, I get my high from exercise. I, you know, I mountain biked before this specifically because I wanted a super clear mind and lots of energy for our podcast. I wanted to get in flow state with you. So, you know, I definitely use exercise kind of as a mental performance enhancing drug and, you know, that that's a blessing and a curse. Like if you do that too much, you're going to, you're going to overtrain and you're going to throw off some hormones and everything. So, um, five years ago I found sauna and cold exposure. And for me, that has just so increased my ability to, you know, train high volume day in and day out. And, you know, my specific routine that I really enjoy is two to three rounds in a hot sauna at about 180 to 200 degrees, and then five to seven minutes in um, cold water. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that also gives me that same, you know, hit of serotonin, that same flow, that same energy that exercise does. So, you know, now I know that if I'm feeling a little overtrained, like go big on the recovery yeah. so that I can get my high from the recovery, but then also feel amazing and stoked to train again the next day. Um, so yeah, walk me through some of what I know. I think you have an ice barrel and mm-hmm. I know that you've worked with hyper ice and use some of the hyper ice products. So yeah, walk me through what, what's your recovery routine look like and how often do you do it? Yeah, that's, um, something that we always, you know, try to, um, to relate to our our team that we coach is just how important recovery is to your training you know getting eight to nine hours of sleep every single night you know mm-hmm. so important you know taking time to um you know recover the mind with meditation um sauna ice barrel ice bath all of that stuff is just going to help you out you know foam roll stretch so my personal um, routine, I wake up every single morning, I uh, 
take about 20 to 30 minutes foam rolling and stretching. So I do a lot of movement prep. It's kind of like an, an initial like getting out of bed, you know, spine stiff from sleeping in some crazy position. It's just mm-hmm. like loosen up that spine, like break down the tension and just decompress basically before I start the day, before I start bending over into like the bottom dressers of my cabinets and like grabbing my pots and pans and stuff. So like, mm-hmm. you know, you can avoid any slip up basically, you know? Um, so I, I focus a lot on foam rolling, stretching. I'll foam roll and stretch probably like two to three times a day. Wow. Um, <laughs> ice bath. Um, I usually take about two a week. Mm-hmm. I don't have access to a sauna. Um, I've been wanting a sauna for a while. I just haven't pulled the trigger. Um, but I definitely, I mean, it's 110 outside, so it's pretty close. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just go lay outside. Go yeah, just, deep sweat. just go sit in the sun or like go into one of my sheds. I'm sure it's probably 180 in a shed out back there. <laughs> <laughs> my god but yeah i mean um yeah so i i, I kind of do a lot of the same stuff that you do for recovery you know ice baths um not much of the sauna stretch foam row i use the massage guns um cbd here and there arnica gel like when i bruise myself or i strain mm-hmm. something arnica gel that that seems to be like one of the miracle um healing gels for me for some reason anytime Mm -hmm. i have a bruise or like um like a like a calcium buildup or a bump or something i'll just use that arnica gel and it literally goes away in a couple days um for me Mm -hmm. i don't know if Mm -hmm. it's true but i might it might be a placebo effect or something but i i swear by that (laughs) amazing <clears throat> yeah, it's it's cool how much you can do at home. Like, you know, we've designed our house here in Denver around, you know, health and wellness and self-care um, just to make it super easy to do. You know, having mm-hmm. we have a, a sunlight and infrared sauna in our basement. We're having an outdoor traditional sauna from Sisu delivered this Friday, two days, Those are which we're super ones. excited yep. about. Yeah. And then we have three cold plunges here. We have red light. Wow. We have hyper ice guns like you know, just laying around for us to use. And then also like we want people coming to visit us to be able to use them, you know, a place like restore when we're traveling, you know, I seek, I seek places like that out. So I know I can get my infrared sauna in. I know I can use a hyper ice gun. I can use Normatec boots. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it's so important for me to feel my best day in and day out. So, you know, if you, you, you can do a lot of this in your own, in your home, you can even do like what you said, cold, uh, an ice bath in your bathtub or a hot Epsom salt bath. A hot Epsom oh, salt yeah. bath is so underrated. <laughs> like I, I do that two to three times per week and I feel amazing after a hot Epsom salt bath. I mean, pretty similar to how I feel after being in a sauna. So, yeah. I mean, that's a simple thing. And then, you know, if, you, if you're not able to do these at your home, join a place like a restore where, mm-hmm. you know, you build that into your routine or a gym that has a sauna and cold plunge. You know, look, look for places that, you know, kind of have it all so you can build all of these things into, into your routine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And just the way each thing makes you feel, you know, um, like how a sauna makes you feel after mm-hmm. putting you kind of like put your body through stress and you get those heat shock proteins, you get those cold shock mm-hmm. proteins from the ice mm-hmm. bath. Um, that's one of my favorite things with the ice bath is once you get in the first minute, minute and a half, you're like, oh, my God, this is way too cold let me out, you know, my, my wrist, my fingers are going to fall off. My toes are going to fall off. Like this is too cold. Like I need to get out right now, but you calm yourself. You focus on your breath. It's like a meditation. You're focusing Mm -hmm. on your breath. You're breathing through your diaphragm, you know, filling your abdomen up with as much air as possible. And you're Mm -hmm. just hanging in there, hanging in tough. And after about a minute and a half, you like gain this like mental strength where it's Mm -hmm. like, You go over this hump and you're no Mm -hmm. longer thinking about, I need to get out. I need to get out. It's too cold. You're like, I'm good. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm at peace right now. I feel good. And you could pretty much stay in there for as long as you can. But I usually just, I I always just five minutes. All right. And I get out and I'm basically like an ice cube, you know, but but like, that's what I I love. 
Yeah. I always tell people in the cold exposure, you know, get out when you start to shiver. For some people that might be a minute, for some people that might be 12 minutes, depending Mm -hmm. on, you know, how cold adapted you are. And also what your core temperature is going in. Like if Mm -hmm. you go from sauna to cold, obviously you can stay in a hell of a lot longer than, you know, if you come in from, you know, if if it's 32 degrees in Colorado and you're jumping in a cold stream, (laughs) I'm only in it for like two minutes before I start to shiver. So yeah, yeah, go until you start to shiver in the cold. Um, and you know, sauna, same thing. Like once you start getting uncomfortable, you know, I, I kind of watch my heart rate. My resting heart rate is 40. When my, when my heart rate gets to about a hundred in the sauna, that's when I know I'm in that fight or flight mode and it's time to get out. So that's how I monitor when to get out of the sauna. And, you know, I think a lot of people see athletes doing this, but I'm, I'm doing it just as much for the mental benefits, immune system benefits as I am for the physical benefits. And you know, there's, there's short-term benefits of like right when you get out of the sauna and the, the cold, like your serotonin levels are so high, you know, it's it's a rush. You feel great. <laughs> but like long, long-term benefits, you know, it just builds stress resilience. Like it takes something monumental now to stress me out because I've practiced that good stress so much. Mm-hmm. And then same with getting sick. Like I never get sick. Yeah. And again, I equate that to doing so much sauna and cold exposure, just like building a robust immune system. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these are things that I really believe everyone should be doing to be the best version of themselves. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, the cold plunge works wonders for skateboarders too. Like if you, let's say I'm skating a 10 stair or a 12 stair and I'm trying a trick for like two hours, just repeatedly jumping down a 12 stair over and over and just crashing into the cement. Like you feel (laughs) so sore, like right after And if you just like go to the store and grab a couple bags of ice and take an ice bath, you'll feel wonderful the rest of the day and you'll feel great the next day. Like you'll feel a lot less sore the next day because you you've pushed out a lot of that inflammation, pushed out a lot of those lactic acids. And now you just feel good, you know. Yep. Yep. Uh, so let's switch gears back to the skateboarding. Mm -hmm. You are a professional skateboarder, but you don't really, you don't do competitions, right? No, I never really did competitions. I'm a street skater. So what street skating is, is you skate around on your own time. You're partnered up with your friends, um, and you guys document what you're doing. So there's a bunch of famous spots around, around the world at like corporations, buildings, schools, out front of businesses, this, that, and the other, just like big sets of stairs, handrails, benches, all that stuff. Um, And that's what a street skater does. He's almost like a, uh, he or she is almost like a street artist, you know? So you're just kind of, you're filming this stuff, you're creating your art and you're making your, your mixtape, your video part. So you're, you're compiling all this different footage, like super hard tricks, um, tricks that never been done before, Um, tricks down like bigger stairs, little stairs, benches, and you're compiling it all together to like show your project at the end of however long, like two, three months, four months, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. each time you present a project to the world. And that's the kind of skating that I've done all my life Mm -hmm. and never Mm -hmm. really was into the competition. Um, it, it was like never, it was never something that I really looked into looked forward to you know i'm not really a competitive person per se Mm -hmm. i more just like to i've always been an artist my whole life i did art with my hands did art with sketching painting sculpture um i just i like i like expressing myself through my art through my Mm -hmm. skills you know and um if anything i'm more competitive with myself you know I compete with myself I always want to give you something better than I gave you last time so that's my Mm -hmm. main competition is myself and it's always been that way Dude, I love that. I love that. I I definitely had a transitionary period from, you know, wanting to compete against others to just wanting to compete against myself. You know, I feel like we're kind of brought up in a society where, you know, we're we're pushed to compete, you know, mm-hmm. against others and not not so much against ourselves and, you know, team sports and, you know, you see, you know, the NBA finals and college basketball, the sweet the the final four and, you know, it's all like competing against others and you know, I think it was with triathlon, my late 20s for me, where I'm like, 
I don't really care so much about like <laughs> beating other people. I just I want to like see what I'm capable of and I want to yeah. compete against myself. And uh, it's really cool, like social media, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all of these different channels, how it's allowed all of us to basically like create our own little TV show. You know, yeah. we can put ourselves out there. And if people appreciate our art from either, you know, a creative aspect, an inspirational aspect, uh, you know, sharing knowledge aspects mm -hmm. like, yeah, you can make a living doing it now. And yeah, that's what I wanted to touch on with the, you know, professional skateboarder, but you're an artist, you know, you, yeah. you put, you have your own channel, you put, you know, creative, inspiring content out there, people tune in and you make a living off that. And I think that's so amazing that we have the opportunity to, to be able to do that. Yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's been a crazy journey, you know, um, you know, through sponsors and endorsements and stuff, you know, I was, I've been able to make a living through what I do. Um, and then also when I did this life change, this 180, I was mm -hmm. able to actually use my social media, not only for entertainment purposes with my skateboarding, with my art, but also to share knowledge and, you mm -hmm. know, teach the youth, people my age and people older, you know, how to, you know, like little, little cheat codes that I learned through my journey of health and wellness and fitness and how they can also use these cheat codes, these, these movements, these things to, uh, help themselves do the things that they love forever. And yeah. that's been like the most meaningful thing for me is using social media to spread my knowledge and to help others. Yeah. That's like pretty much my favorite part, you know? Yeah, I mean, you've 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 transcended skateboarding and become more of a lifestyle brand. And you know, I remember when when I followed you after the that whoop shoot. Mm -hmm. You know, your story was like all of like what you were eating, how you were training. <laughs> Not a damn chance. Yeah. You know, you eating something and then you know saying your moniker. Um, so yeah, so it, cool how you repurposed. You know your your knowledge you were learning at that time to you know help other people because you know skateboarding is a small niche you know not yeah. everyone is aspiring to be a professional skateboarder but everyone is aspiring to live their best life exactly. and the content you put out now allows people to live their best life. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's um, it's been wild. You know, I I never really put too much skateboarding on my Instagram like every now and again, but I can't film myself skateboarding. Whereas like mm -hmm. I could film myself eating, I could film myself training with the tripod and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. so it, I rather post stuff that's going to help someone than just like nothing but entertainment. Like here's another trick. Here's another trick. Here's another trick. It's like, I want, I want everyone to, uh, gain something from this, you know? And yeah, that's been my, my mission, you know, ever since, I switched everything. I love that. So, you know, you leveraged your audience, you leveraged the knowledge, you know, that you amassed with nutrition and you now have two businesses in mm -hmm. the food space. You have yeah. NADC, not a damn chance. I want you to say it because <laughs> only you can say it the best. Not a damn um, chance. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So follow Need Stories, you know, he'll, uh, he'll smash a, a healthy meal and then he'll say his, uh, his moniker, not a damn chance. Yep. Um, but yeah, you created a spice line, which uh, Aaron Alexander, who we both know, he was over this past uh, this mm -hmm. past week, and we were using your spices on our steaks and oh, chicken. It's, so awesome it's a bomb. To see. Yep. And then you got a restaurant. That, that, has it opened yet? We started a restaurant. It's going to be um, the first like brick and mortar window, basically, where you can get our NADC burger. So um, I partnered up with my friend. He's uh, Philip Franklin Lee. He owns mm -hmm. like the, the uh, scratch. Scratch Sushi Bar, restaurants, all of those around Austin. Amazing. Um, pasta Bar in Austin. Like, mm -hmm. all of those, like, super good ones. He brought Sushi Bar to Austin as well. Um, he, super gnarly chef. He has Michelin stars. He's, he's just a beast, you know, like, amazing cooker. Great mm -hmm. friend. Me and him, we bonded over skateboarding and eating, cooking and stuff, you know. Like, um, I went to his restaurant, and I showed him my... Uh, my hearth in my backyard, this big brick structure that I built to cook steaks and stuff over wood fire. And he mm -hmm. showed me his and we we're like, what? No way. You know, and like we started like we hit it off from there. But yeah, me and him, we've been, you know, 
making this burger together. Um, once he tried my spices, my NADC OG steak, he was just like, oh, man, this is so good. Like, it'll be super good on a burger. So me and him started collaborating on a burger. And then we mm -hmm. finally finalized it. And we've been doing pop-ups for the past few months. Like, we did a couple in L.A., a couple in Austin. And now it was finally time to, like, roll something out. And hopefully, you know, we could roll a couple of them out. And, you know, I, I know everyone's going to love these burgers because this is like, it's like that burger that you're like dad or mom or uncle used to make back in the day when you would go to like a pool party, you know, and like dad's on the barbecue flipping the burgers. And, you know, it's just it just brings you back. And it's an amazing burger. And I'm really excited for the world to try it. I'm so stoked for you. Where is it going to be in Austin? It's going to be at Idle Hands off uh, in Rainy Street. So, you know, cool. Rainy Street where they have like all I those do. little houses that are bars. So yep. one of them is called Idle Hands. And in the back, they have a little restaurant. And in that restaurant, we're going to have a little burger window. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be like the only place that you could get our NADC burger is going to be at Idle Hands in Austin. So cool. I it's love it. It's going to be rad. Oh man, I'm so stoked for you. I can't wait to try it. What's, uh, what's your diet like right now? Are, are you um, heavy on meat, protein? What's, uh, you know, vegetables? What, what percent of your plate is vegetables, fruit? <laughs> you know, I could talk about this stuff for hours. <laughs> yeah, hey, so I got uh, hours. <laughs> so right now, um, I mean, so I, I follow like certain macros, you know? So mm -hmm. like, very calorie caloric based very um, macro based with what i eat i start my day off with um high protein high fat and mm -hmm. then as soon as like maybe an hour before i'm gonna train i'll eat a bunch of carbs maybe like 100 125 grams of carbs and mm -hmm. this is usually just fruit before mm -hmm. i work out so just like bananas i'll have like greek yogurt pour a bunch of honey on it blueberries like two bananas, four mandarins, some dates, something like that. You know, just a bunch of carbs, like a big mm -hmm. batch of them. I wait for a, for an hour. I'll work out. After I work out, I eat another big batch of carbs, like another 125 batch of carbs or so. Um, mm -hmm. And this is usually an acai bowl. I brought mm -hmm. those back. So Love I'll just acai bowls. yeah, I'll just dump some frozen fruit, bananas, acai. Uh, uh, some cherry bundy cherry juice in there protein powder like i'll just like just dump so much stuff inside the blender blend it up make a nice like thick um base and then just cover it with granola another banana so it's just like highest carbs in the world you know and then mm -hmm. um which is great because it helps me with recovery which is another big thing with recovery is your nutrition yep so i'll have that and then maybe an hour or so later, I'll have, um, I've been eating a lot of lob. It's a uh, Thai food. So <laughs> you just basically get ground chicken and you, um, you sear the ground chicken, start cooking it in your skillet. And then you add like fish sauce. You add some, a little bit of palm sugar. You add some, uh, Thai chili pepper flakes, some shallot, some garlic, red onions green onion. like it's just a bunch of stuff bunch of flavors a lime and it's like so it's like ground chicken with all these like thai flavors and then you just eat that with like cabbage and lettuce and some carrots and stuff so i usually have that for lunch after my big carb meal and mm -hmm. then something big for dinner like pretty low carb like mainly like steak and potatoes for dinner that's my my usually my go-to. I love know? it. I love <laughs> but, it. But basically, my diet is all whole foods for the most part. Just stuff mm -hmm. from the earth, mm -hmm. um, meats, veggies, fruits, some grains. Um, every now and again, obviously, I'll have a cheat meal. I'll have a burger. I'll have a mm -hmm. pizza. I'll have pasta. Mm -hmm. But it's mainly based on whole foods. Mm-hmm. I love it. That's so important. Whole foods instead of processed foods because yeah. our body knows what to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I build my calories throughout the 
day. I, uh, I certainly don't do as high carb diet as you do, but mm-hmm. I do a pretty high protein diet. I'm typically, I you know have my morning cocktail of nutrients. I do uh, beet elite in the morning, athletic greens, NMN, um, colostrum from Armra, mm-hmm. and creatine. I just put that in water, and oh, then yes. I do coffee with with collagen and a little honey. That's all I have before my my morning workout. Yeah, after my morning workout, I'll do something similar to you. I'll make an acai bowl, a smoothie bowl. I'll do collagen protein, banana, frozen berries, mm-hmm. um, you know, spinach, some kind of leafy green, um, and maybe a nut butter to get some fat in there. And then, yeah, after my aerobic session in the afternoon, I'm training probably three hours a day. <clears throat> after that aerobic session, I might do either another smoothie or I'll do like three or four eggs and some turkey sausage. Nice. And then dinner for me is the is the biggest meal. And that generally is like two burgers, potatoes, oh, yeah. um, some kind of veggie or a steak, potato, some kind of veggie or chicken thighs, sticky rice, um, some kind of veggie. And then I'll do some nut butter before bed. Um, nice. And, you know, I think, I think the keys with this are A, whole foods. Yeah. And then B, you know, finding foods you really enjoy Mm -hmm. and putting it on autopilot. Like it sounds like, you know, what you and I do, like we're not straying a ton, you know, we have pretty similar. Yeah. It's pretty similar every single day. I, I literally have no decisions I have to make around food unless I go out to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And even when I go out to a restaurant, you know, generally I already know what I'm going to get at that restaurant. And it's typically a, you know, a healthier restaurant Mm -hmm. like you, I'll have pizza here and there, or, you know, I'll, I'll have something that's off the plan. Um, and I always feel like shit after doing it, yeah, but that, that's you know, I guess we're human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, what foods do you enjoy? Put it on an autopilot and, you know, eat the same, you know, similar foods at the same times each day. And like, you will perform physically and mentally absolutely amazing if you do that. Exactly. That's exactly what I do. It's like dinner. There's not even a question. It's like, I, you can either have, you know, salmon, fish, chicken, steak or ground beef yeah a veggie on the side a little bit of extra fat whether that's tello some uh, ghee or something and then um i usually like to have a little fruit for dessert you know it's like Mm -hmm. super simple and that's every single day i switch it up every time and um you know my spice rubs have helped me with that that's why i made them is so i could switch the uh flavor profile each time yeah you know so it's like it's easy yeah. And I truly believe we're creatures of habit. So, mm-hmm. you know, if like Skittles and Starburst, if that's like your snack of choice, you know, that is your snack of choice. Like you, you just fall into that routine mm-hmm. if you have it around. You know, if you don't have it around and you just stock your fridge with fruit, you, I, I like fruit more than I like candy. Oh, yeah. And that's what I keep in the house. So like it, it's not even a thought that crosses my mind to have you know, candy or something that is processed, you know, cause I don't keep it in the house and it's not in my routine. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You could, I've stuffed them with like actual pecans, which is really good too. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Um, what's your mix right now of skateboarding? How often are you skateboarding versus doing strength training? Do you do, you know, strength training first, skateboarding second? What's kind of your order of operation? If you, if you do both in a day, I usually, my, my prioritized days are Saturday and Sunday. Those are my main days to skate super hard and to film. So Mm -hmm. I basically plan all of my, my personal training to, um, the hardest days are going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then mm-hmm. I'm going to start to kind of cap off the uh, the volume, the intensity by Thursday and Friday and Saturday so that I'm basically near 100% for Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and cool. Sunday are the main skate days. I'll skate again during the week, maybe like today I'll probably skate later on. So like Wednesday, um, sometimes I'll skate Thursday. But Monday and Friday, I do not like to skate because those are like Mm -hmm. right near the weekend, which is like my hardest skate sessions. So Mm -hmm. Friday is kind of a day that I use to charge up so I can skate Mm -hmm. really good for Saturday and Sunday. And then Mm -hmm. Monday is a day that I use to recover because I just skated super hard Saturday and Sunday. 
So it's, Love it. it's very strategic, like how I skate and how I plan my training with my skating. Um, mm -hmm. Leg days, which is Monday and Thursday, those days I don't skate. I just mm -hmm. hang out, you know, rest up. Um, and then any upper body day or conditioning day, I'll probably skate. It's not really that uh, strenuous on my central nervous system. So I usually mm -hmm. can go about skating. And I, what I do is I either, if it's not going to be a very strenuous workout, I'll, I'll do it before I skate in the morning mm -hmm. to kind of just like mm -hmm. lift myself up, enhance the endorphins and just get fired up. Whereas, like, if it's going to be a strenuous day, I'll just do it at night if I'm going to skate that day. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'll skate first, come home, get into the strenuous workout, eat a bunch of food, pass out, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, it's so interesting how we all find, like, what our perfect blend is. Like, for me, I found that... You know, if I do CrossFit in the morning and run in the afternoon, it smashes me for the next day. It, it's just, you know, two um, high impact exercises that, you know, just bang me up. I used to be able to do it, but, you know, as, as we age, obviously, at uh, those compounding interests of the year's training, they catch up with us. So now I've, I, if I do something high impact in the morning and I want to do two sessions in a day, I'll bike in the afternoon. And biking for me is almost like active recovery. Um, you know, it's low impact. It's not taxing on my nervous system. Um, so I can combine those two activities, you know, either running in the morning, biking in the afternoon, or CrossFit in the morning, biking in the afternoon, and back it up again the next day. But yeah, I've learned that like running and CrossFit in the same day, typically no bueno. <laughs> yeah, and these are things that you, you learn. Like you don't start off just knowing how to do this stuff. Like you have to learn through experience. And it took, yep. it also took me a long time to actually figure this out you know to figure out this split and make it work to where i could get all my benefits from my training and still be able to skate at like a high level you know and not be fatigued and beat up while i skate so um you know it took me some time and when i fi figured it out you know i've been trying to spread the word and you know help others figure it out as well you know that also yeah. train and skate yep um, talk to me about injuries. I know you've had some injuries. I mean, obviously with any professional sport, um, especially when there's risk involved, you're playing with fire. Um, what, what is, you know, what's your injury, um, order? So for example, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say ACL cause that's horrible, but you tweak something, you know, what, what order of things do you do? Do you have a specific thing that you resort to when injured in order to, you know, try and get that better? <clears throat> I'm super quick with going to get it checked out. Um, I have friends at uh, Beach City's Orthopedics. It's in uh, Manhattan Beach in California. Mm -hmm. So if I injure myself out here in Texas, I literally jump on a plane the next day and go check out wow. my friends. You know, um, I'm very, um, I'm a bit, I'm a huge believer in getting the thing fixed as fast as I can, so I could continue doing what I'm doing and continue mm -hmm. working. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really like to sit on an injury and hope that it heals, hope that it goes away. Cause some, some injuries you need surgery, you know, so, and that's yeah. just the bottom line. And it's like, the yeah. longer you sit around, the longer you wait, it's not even doing, it's not doing you any good. You're just wasting time. So I'm very, I'm very quick with like going to get an MRI, going to get an x-ray get it checked out yeah. and make sure everything is intact. If everything is intact, then, you know, I'm going to go over a lot of the same stuff that we talked about. Heat, um, code yep. therapy, um, the Arnica stretching, yep. foam rolling, um, using the massage gun and just kind of doing everything that I can do to heal the injury. And then, you know, I'll also still train while I'm injured. I'll just avoid yeah. irritating that area. So, you know, if, yeah. it, like a couple times, I think in the beginning of this year, I was in a boot, you know, the, that like foam boot because I hurt my yeah. uh, ankle. So I would just, you know, I could still ride the assault bike with the, with the boot on. So I would do that yeah. and that would keep my quads together because it's actually, yeah. there's a lot of resistance in that. And I'll do a lot of leg curls and leg extensions. So I was keeping the hamstrings strong, the glutes strong, you know, my quads strong. And then 
a lot of upper body, like seated stuff, Z press for like shoulder presses, sitting on the bench, you know, bench press, pulls, pull ups, like everything was still good. I just had to avoid irritating my ankle for that time. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell people it's not what you can't do. It's what you still can do, you know, and oftentimes you can work around it. You know, if it's an upper body injury, do lower body. If it's a lower body injury, do upper body. So there's often times when you can work around it. Um, I mean, sauna, ice, red light, all of that stuff. I think of that as, you know, preventative. That helps me from not getting injured. If I am injured, obviously I continue to do it, but I really count those things as like, that's helping me not get injured. And then also like we both do skill-based activities, you know, me with the mountain biking and Olympic lifting, obviously skateboarding is a very skill-based activity. Um, and I like to be in flow when I do those things. So there's less room for error. And what I found is I need to do them consistently in order to keep that feel for it. Um, and you know, you told me what your skateboarding routine is like, you have to keep your feel for it. I feel like the times when I get injured, they're often when I, that when I lose my feel for something, if I haven't mountain bike for two weeks and I try go and go out and rip a mountain bike ride, you know, I've kind of lost my feel for it a little bit. You know, I have to back off or pick an easier trail. So, you know, I don't crash. Um, same with the Olympic lifting. Like if I take two or three weeks off of cleaning, um, snatching any of those skill-based movements, like that's when I tweak something because my movement patterns are off. So I try to keep any of those skill-based activities in my routine. And then I also, you know, like you, I'm sure, say no to a lot of other things that would get in the way of the things I really enjoy doing to, to keep high skill for them. Um, how's being a dad? Congratulations. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, nothing in the world will get you ready for it until you go through it, you know? I've heard that. Yeah, it's... I've heard that. It's wild. Um, and even just, you know, as we speak of all these recovery things, it's like, it's hard to get number one, which is sleep. <laughs> you know, yeah. like you really have to, you know, strategize to get your eight to nine hours of sleep in. And it's going to be like a a very scattered eight to nine hours, you know? So, um, sure. It's definitely been a learning experience. You learn something new every single day, but I mean, I love the little guy and he's super cool and I can't wait for you guys to meet him. <laughs> Maybe bring him over to your house to hang out. <laughs> What's his name? What's his name? His name's Rocco. Rocco. I yeah. love it. What a great name. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to be a rock star. Oh yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, my man, so good chatting with you. I'm so stoked for everything you have going on. I can't wait to visit your restaurant. Um, you know, if you guys don't already follow Neen, give him a follow. I think you'll really enjoy his content. His spices are amazing. If you guys like grilling, definitely check out his spice line, Not a Damn Chance. And yeah, if you need a program to follow, his ladder program with his buddy Rain, who's a savage, is a very good program to follow. So I really appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with me today. And, um, you know, thanks to Restore Hyper Wellness for allowing us to do this podcast together. And yeah, for you guys that haven't been to a Restore, go check them out use the code elements 20 i love you my man thank you man thanks so much for having me so stoked to talk to you yeah. and i can't wait to see you soon man likewise very soon cheers thank brother you, brother <laughs> thanks guys for tuning in nine elements listeners can receive 20 percent off your first restore service using the code elements 20 when making your first appointment and if you like this episode please leave a positive review subscribe and stay tuned for another episode coming soon